cut it halfway. You too long. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. So, hi, Kimberly. Hi, how are you going? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Can you can you just tell us um, just a little bit about you, who you are? Um, well, as you correctly identified, I am Kimberly, and um, and I am from the great state of Victoria. Um, I live in Geelong, in Highton, where I've only just moved in the last few months because I saw the light and moved to the coast. And I'm loving it. Um, I work for the Baptist Union of Victoria. So that I don't know why Victoria calls themselves a union, but we're the only state that does. But that's what we do. We're the Union of Churches in Victoria. So my title is Generations and Emerging Leaders Pastor. And so essentially that means I'm like pastor to the pastors who work in any sort of generational engagement for kids, youth, families, young adult ministry. Um, just mentoring, coaching, supporting, encouraging, training, connecting them to one another through networks, that sort of thing. Um, but also as part of that job, it's um, just helping all of our churches to think and act generationally, particularly those who don't have pastors or leaders engaged in roles that would do that. So helping churches to always keep that conversation front of mind. And also sort of just rattling the cage of our movement to make sure that we're um, responding to changes in culture and we're connecting with emerging generations and a big piece of that is um, some intentional development of um, strategies and processes for identifying, developing and deploying emerging leaders. Wow. <laughs> That's huge. That's a huge and then on Tuesday, I... No. <laughs> <laughs> So that yeah, sounds so, like it's a really big job. It, it's a really fun job. I can't believe I get to do it for like, and people pay me. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I feel very privileged. But it, it's a large job. We're a large network. You know, there's over 240 churches. Um, you know, uh, there's it's a very diverse um, family of of churches that um, make up that that 240 plus. And but um, it's also about, like, I don't do all the things. I'm just there to make sure they get done. So it's sort of about empowering people. And um, I, I think for the most part, when we're talking about denominational leadership, all of our best resources are the pastors and leaders who are engaged in ministry in their local context. And so it's just trying to help them be them and flourish in their space and, um, and be the kind of church God's wanting them to be in the community that has placed them. And so it's a lot about just, connecting people with other people. Somebody described my job to me, when I, after I described it to them, they described it to me as being like a bee, where I just sort of buzz around and collect pollen from different flowers and then like share it across all the other flowers. I like that as a, as a word picture. I think it, it sums, sums it up. And also it's because I've got, like I spend most of my time listening to stories and then sharing stories. And you, know, you meet with somebody, oh, we're trying, doing this with our play group. But then the next person I meet with, they're like, we're trying to work out how to engage our community. Well, that church is doing something with their play group. And so it's just this connecting people and their stories to each other and, um, and yeah, drawing on the resource that, that exists within our, our family of churches. Cool. So I noticed just by following you on Facebook, you tend to travel a lot. Now, obviously you can't do that at the moment. So how are you managing your role I'm not. Oh, oh well, how am I managing? I thought I stopped at managing. No, no. I'm going to ask you that shortly. <laughs> personal level, your role. How are yeah. you managing your role while you actually can't go anywhere? Yeah, there's a lot of Zoom, as all of us are saying in this season. There's a lot of Zoom. So, um, hosting a mostly daily online chats for anybody who just wants to connect with other pastors. Um, resource like helping to resource our broader family. So our comms team in our at, in the Vic Baptist family has been nuts and they've been providing such great resource to our pastors. So just being part of making that happen. Um, but yeah, just a lot of trying to sort of replicate what I would do, which is go and visit somebody and have a coffee with them, but here in a screen, which is not as fun, but, but it's good still um, in terms of just helping. I mean, it's been a, it's the, the shift I think is, has happened over time to start with everybody was just in panic scramble mode. So it was a lot of um, linking resources and, and people to what are we allowed to do? What can, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. And every couple of days it was changing. Um, just yesterday, Bill Brown, who's one of our staff, he and, and on team with me, we, we hosted a chat where he was leading that conversation about how to, what does it look like for leadership to start looking forward 
looking out of this? What do we learn from it? What do we take with us? What do we leave behind? All those sorts of questions. So I think we're, we're changing a little bit um, in terms of our focus now because people are ready to um, you know, embrace a little bit more bigger picture thinking rather than um, just be doing the scramble. And also I think people are, are getting to the edge of um, a very uh, high energy, high output season and needing a fair bit of encouragement and, and sort of nurturing at this stage too, I think. Yes, I, I get that. I'm seeing that a bit too. Um, yeah, it's running yeah. so fast. Yeah, and, and so it was such a big change all of us so quickly. Like to yeah. go from face to face stuff all the time to like yeah. nothing. And, and also, a, how do we do this? A lot, and a lot of um, you know people who who are managing teams of volunteers and stuff. It's, so all the volunteers go to their homes, you know, and they go to doing schooling from home and work from home, and and everything shifts for everybody. And so quite a lot of our pastors and leaders ended up sort of holding the baby sort of thing and and mm. needing to to process a lot of. Um, like what can I do personally because I can't, it, it takes a different type of leadership to mobilise team and so everybody's making those adjustments. And yeah, but it's yeah. been, I mean, generally we keep saying as a, as a family of churches, like we're just so impressed by how quickly people did pivot though and um, just the, you know, churches that just threw so much energy into like how do we keep our, our church community together, how do we keep meeting the needs of our community, like it's been really quite impressive to watch. And I keep reminding everybody, we are writing the illustrations for every change management course that happens <laughs> for the next 20 years. It'll be, well, there was this one time in 2020 when the whole world like broke and then we all had to, <laughs> let me give you the three lessons I learned from that. You watch. It's, com it's coming. We are living oh, the, so the, next, the next, you know, hundred textbooks that get written about how to manage change. So we're in it. We know this is we've actually done it. It's no longer. <laughs> I think this is how it'll work. It's like no, no. Yeah. This is how it works or how it doesn't work. For, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what happened. Yeah. Um, okay. So I know that you are a single lady, and at the moment you are social. I, so what's that word? Dis isolating. isolating that. Mm. How are you managing that? Because I know you've got your mum, but you don't yep. live with your mum. You live on your no, own. Hey, mum. Mum has been social family. isolating too. And so, how are you managing that? Yeah, um, well, it's been a, a challenge. It's been a journey. Um, and I, like, I've actually been very pleasantly surprised to discover that I could manage and. Um, that I could do the self-discipline thing to maintain some sort of, um, I don't know, routine and rhythm to my life. So I set that up pretty early in the piece, which was good, and it sustained me thus far. Um, Victoria's only just starting to lift restrictions. So um, yeah. when um, we're now allowed to have other people in our homes for the first time. So that's that's a bit exciting. I've got someone coming for dinner tomorrow night. Um, so I might get out the good crystal, I think, because, you know, <laughs> why not? Um, but I did go to the shops yesterday, like, with real shoes on, and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to, like, do some work on that because the feet and the legs are like, what are we doing out of moccasins and sneakers? <laughs> so um, we're going to have to do some training, some re-entry training. <laughs> walking training. <laughs> I'm just going to be walking around my house in heels just, just in case. <laughs> um, build, build up those muscles. Um, I have been very blessed to, and it's one of the, the joys of having moved down here is finding myself in just a great, um, like local neighbourhood, so neighbours and stuff that uh, a lot of people that walk past my front gate. So I'm like sitting at the window like a puppy <laughs> and then run out and check the mail for the 17th time today. <laughs> Fancy bumping you into you here. Um, but also like near neighbours that have been a lot more intentional about, you know, dropping food off and sharing stuff. And so I do get to see live humans most days, but there are some days that I don't. And so that's been, it's been a challenge, but we've got there or we're getting there or we're yeah. so far there. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you guys are about the same as we are at the moment in Queensland. We've just been allowed to start having two people. And from Friday, I think we can have five people in our house, yeah. 10 people outside. Yeah. Ten people outside. Yeah. So, Look so at that's, you guys yeah. go. Yeah. So schools go back next week, I think, and no, the week like yeah, yeah, a week and a bit, and um, or half some of the schools like the certain age groups and stuff, but shops are starting to reopen, and you know, 
but I was down. I had I serve our local church has a community care arm, and I was down packing pa- pantry parcels. I was, there's a lot of p words there. Um, I was packing pantry parcels, and we were just watching people out on the street. Um, who like we we just we're not good at social distancing. Like I feel like I wanted to say, guys, be better because we we're going to get in trouble. We're going to send us back to our room. But um, <laughs> I, I hope, hopefully we can get it right. I, like, <laughs> I just feel like running around the tape measure. No, no, yeah. no! They're coming. Step aside. Every, every time I go to the shops, it's like get away. Yeah. Stay away. <laughs> to someone, just stay over there. Yeah. I had a friend, to a friend yesterday who's six foot seven. And I was like, stay over there. And he's like, I've got it figured out. And he said, if I fall down and don't hit you, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in timber distance. Oh, I've got to. <laughs> oh, man. So we've had our grade 12s went back on Monday, which means Sarah went back to school. Nice. <laughs> on Monday. And the rest go back. So Matt goes back the week after next as well. But yeah, yeah. yeah. She was ready yeah. to go back. She was so excited to go back. And she got to yesterday and then she had to go back. Yeah, it was. It was exciting for a little while. My niece was saying that she's um, in grade five and she was saying, um, she's like, I'm actually really excited to go back to school. She says, which is really weird. And, but then I was like, well, let's just see how that goes. <laughs> let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> it's good. No, it's good. Okay. So um, I know that you're an author and what I would like you to do now is just tell us about your book, mm-hmm. um, what it's about. Um, and anything around that that you'd like to share with us? I just, um, yeah, if you can just do yep. that. So the book is called What We Cannot Be Alone, Understanding Singleness in God's Family. And essentially it's a book about um, that comes out of my own journey in both in singleness but also in church leadership. Um, what does it look like for a single person to navigate a an environment that is highly family oriented and you know where it's a, um, very focused on marriage and children and as it ought to be, but what does it look like for a single person to to um, journey through that space alone and recognize from my own experience um, in leadership so our church was well flavored by um, the singleness conversation because of my presence in senior leadership, but a lot of most churches don't have um, single people in uh, at the leadership table, and so churches um, primarily are led by married, well married men, but also married leaders, and um, and so we don't know what we don't know. And my experience, you know, ha- of of engaging with other single people led me to understand that there was a lot of conversations that needed to be had. Um, for people who were married to become a lot more aware of what the unique need and um, blessing and challenge and gift of singleness might mean for people in their community, but also um, to to be given some tools to to navigate that and to to be much more um, savvy in how we communicate and what we do to ensure that everybody in our church family feels like they're part of our church family. So that's the book. It's it's. I mean, it's it. Hopefully, is an encouragement to singles. The primary feedback I get from single people is that it puts words to some of the things they've experienced, and it helps them to just to feel affirmed and you know that somebody else understands. But I think you know the the main um, focus is actually helping people to to take their blinders off a little bit because, as I say, we don't know what we don't know. Um, giving some some context, some awareness for people to to start looking at the single people in their church families differently um, so that, yeah, we all, we all get to experience family because it's unique for those who don't have family of their own, how can the church family be family to them? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's um, <clears throat> really important because I think we, you're right. We don't know what we don't know and we don't realize, you know, um, being married with kids and yes, I've got single friends, but yeah. you don't, kind of think about how their journey is so much different yeah and, and that at the end of the day they're going home on their to be on their own yeah it's good. and yeah and someone that's there <laughs> it, and it's natural like we all look at the world through our own lens and we sort of we we perceive everybody else's experience through our own and so there are um yeah we've all got blind spots in that sense 
Um, and I think, you know, equally, um, my personal journey is that I was married for a while. And um, so I've kind of experienced both sides of it. And I feel like I, there's often times when I'm communicating with single people that I'm helping them to understand marriage in a more realistic um, way as well, or, you know, connecting them to some of the, the challenges or the, the realities for their, their married friends too, because we just, we look at life through the lens of the, the lifestyle or the, the, um, the life stage that we are in and it's, it's a fairly natural thing to do. Um, but so I love the intentionality that, you know, that people bring to reading the book or having the conversation that says, well, let's ask the question, what, what don't we know? You know, how does this impact um, other people or, or what are the unique things that people are experiencing? I had a friend recently say to me that he was, um, he just had a thought, he goes, oh, you know, poor Kim, like, She's completely on her own in isolation. Like, I feel so sorry for her. And then he went, actually, though, it <laughs> sounds like it'd be okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I said to him, that's exactly how I feel. Like every now and then, you know, there are times when I'm like, poor me, I'm alone in isolation. And then other times it's like, oh, man, I'm glad I'm alone in isolation. You know, like there's, there's ups and downs and yes. wins and losses and, you know, um, pros and cons to every experience. But I think it's the sensitivity to to be aware, as you say, that other people are, <laughs> bless you, other Didn't people are time. <laughs> <laughs> experiencing life differently. So, yeah. Yeah. Good to be aware. Yeah. So that's really good. Um, okay. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before I open it up to questions um, about anything that you would like, anything that's on your heart, anything you want to throw at us um, or not? No, I, I am completely blank. Okay, she's completely right. So let's ask her some questions. <laughs> no, I'm I've got a lot. I can share all the things, but yeah, let's let's get questions so that I'm sharing things that matter okay. to you guys. <laughs> go, people, go. I can, I can tell you about my latest Netflix binge, you know, whatever you need to know. Crochet tips, I'm here for you. <laughs> I've seen that. And story reading. Story time. I'm all over it. I love story time. <laughs> okay, people, you, I'm sure you've got questions for Kimberly because you know her mostly and you, you know she's amazing. So ask away. Come on, you've got to unmute yourselves first, by the way. Don't forget to do that. Look at them all. They're just there going, we've got nothing to say. They've got nothing to say to you. Come on. Okay, well, unmute yourselves and let's just have a chat. Just, yeah, just let the thinking happen, Cathy. Don't rush. Yeah. Just pause. Well, this is trying to figure out how to unmute Ruminating to happen. Yeah, I'm on the <laughs> iPad again. Um, <laughs> um, in your experience with different generations across churches, do you find any particular generation tends to get left behind a little bit or overlooked? Um, well, I think every generation will probably posit that they do, um, whether that's true or not. Um, I mean, like all of the, a lot, well, sorry, a lot of our um the generation conversation, like secularly, like you know, outside of the church world, suggests that Gen Xs do because they're um, they're sort of they're the one they they don't have as much sort of um, that has happened in their generation that that categorizes them in a certain way and all that sort of stuff. But then that's me, church, that's, that's me. Gen I don't know how old are you? Uh -huh. you well, you might be then. Um, <laughs> 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 that's a <laughs> Kathy, that's um, going on YouTube. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> Thought about that. Um, but I like. I think I. I would say that um, in different churches, different generations are probably mo like. Um, you know, there there may be some trends denominationally, but I would say like even in our Baptist family, there are churches who do really well at generational engagement in terms of youth and young adult youth and kids but they miss young adults or they don't have a very active seniors group. I know that the in-betweeners, um, my previous church, we tried to sort of, how do you engage the space? But like you're not seniors yet, but you're also not engaged in church um, as a family. So empty nesters, you know, that, that generation, I think there's um, a, probably that's the generation that regular church service engages, like the Sunday part of church. But there's not a lot of ministry activity that's targeted at that at that group. Um, but again, I think different churches. I mean, we've we've got some churches within our our family that are um, very 
like oriented towards seniors. So they, they have targeted that as their, their ministry. They operate near um, retirement villages. You know, so there's a, there's a, a community engagement that piece for them. Um, but then other churches may not be as focused on the seniors. So, yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, the answer is, I guess, after all that, it's probably no. Like, I don't see specifically that um, as a trend, but I think um, if you look in certain patches, you can see um, there's, there's certain ways that churches engage better or, or not with, with some generations. I mean, the older young adult group, um, I reckon that's a, a new challenging group for churches to engage with because I think um, it used to be a little bit young adult and then young families. But if you're not a young family, where does that that group, you know, where does that sit? Um, and, yeah, the same that I think we tend to talk to adults in churches as parents. And so if you get to the stage where you're the parent of adult kids and so that's not really your identity in that Space. you know you're just there as a couple or you're there as a single person um i think yeah there's some challenges there when uh, it's kind of what the whole thing the book about singleness and it's what the whole man mantra for me around generational engagement is that we um that we make assumptions and we group people sometimes really unhelpfully um to uh, had somebody say to me one time when i was talking about the book like i don't think we actually have any single people at my church and i was like i I reckon you do. And, <laughs> and um, but one of the things I said is like, don't you have like the row of older single ladies in your church? Like every church has a row of older single ladies, don't they? Like, isn't that, doesn't it come with like the church? I don't know. And, um, and they went, oh yeah, we've got one of them. I'm like, well, they're single, you know, but it's just a mind, like it's a, it's a, um, a stereotyping that like old, older people are not single people or, you know, those, yeah. We, uh, we just have these frameworks that we put around things that, that sometimes mean people get left out. Yeah, we, we have a row of single men, old, sing, older single men at our church. Wow, well, you need to get us. together the church with a row of older single ladies <laughs> and just make it all happen. Well, we've got, we've got rows of both, but one, the women Come sit on. up here and the men sit down there. I <laughs> know, <laughs> oh, they need to sit together, don't they? It's like, we sit together. Come on, you guys. Yeah, because the goal is matchmaking. <laughs> She says, it's matter that they're 87 years old, does it? Okay. <laughs> Can I just ask a question in regards to singleness? Um, yeah. I do have a couple of friends who are single, but they're also quite introverted, um, which I don't think you are. <laughs> yes. So sometimes when I really feel like I, I want to reach out and say, feel free to come over for dinner, um, like we've spoken about this before, and you're yeah. slipper family that you can just come over and be yourself with. Yeah. Um, but they refuse <laughs> <laughs> and just like, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe, and then they never come. And yeah. so I don't know whether to actually just go to their house and, and take my children and yeah. a pizza or something and just yeah. say, I'm coming. Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, I think the challenge for single introverts is that they don't need people or they don't, sorry, they don't feel like they need people but they still do. So that's what I, like, because someone asked me recently, is it better to be a single introvert or a single extrovert? Like which one's oh, easier to question. navigate? And I, I think like both are challenging. I mean, for the extrovert, the challenge is that we are needing people all the time. And so we have to, we're constantly in that state of sort of having to generate interactivity to live. And whereas for introverts, though, they don't need that, but they kind of do need that. Like, and so as you're sort of identifying that even um, for an interest, like they're not sort of going, oh, yeah, yes, I'd love to be in your noisy house with my slippers on, you know. Um, um, the reality is they kind of do need relationships like that, even if they don't want them. But, so, but I think, um, and particularly if you're talking about introverts who may not feel as socially confident or... Um, you know, ha have other challenges that they're trying to process that would make them comfortable in a larger group environment. I reckon you sort of got to help them build the muscle up a little bit. So it might be, it might be that you just have to, you know, really nurture a confident relationship with you. And then it's a, you know, it, it is some sort of exposure therapy that like allows them to spend time with family, but not in a way that, you know, that is overwhelming because, um, I mean, that's a, a fair baptism of fire to be sort of chucked into a family that's functioning already. 
Um, because if you think for yourself, you've you've grown this or family. Or dysfunctioning, one or the other. Or dysfunctioning, <laughs> yeah, both in equal equal amounts. But you've grown this family to where it is, you know, and in terms of your increasing capacity to handle the level of noise or or number of things that are happening or not handle like <laughs> or drama, <laughs> drama, all that sort of stuff. And so, um, yeah, I think for introverts, um, that yeah, it's just not as it's not as natural a pull for them. But um, but I think too we we always wanted to be having the conversations more um, with individuals because no two single people are the same in the sense it, even if there are you know no two introverts are the same as each other let alone extroverts or any you know introvert or extrovert um, but I think having the conversation that sort of asks those questions about like where are the where are the relational gaps, you know, that we could help you fit, you know, or what need do you have? Because it may not be family craziness that they need. It might actually be more the one-on-one -on -one stuff or, um, you know, they may not feel the the lack of of that dynamic as much as others. So it's, but it, they're likely to be missing something relationally if they're isolated or living on their own. Um, so maybe it's just more of a conversation to find out what it is that they really miss. I don't know. I don't know. And maybe you should like reconsider which pizza it is that you make or something. I don't know. Like it could be that. <laughs> She's yeah, probably going to watch this video, so we could just have the conversation after she's seen it then. Yeah, you can ask her. What did you think? I'm happy, happy to catalyze that conversation yeah. for oh, you. <laughs> uh, it, it is interesting, though, to, to, um, to, because every time I say this to people, you know, tell that the slip of story, you know, tell the story about the value of being welcomed into family in a more casual way. Um, there's always a diverse response to that. And so um, whilst I've managed to train thousands of people in how to look after me, <laughs> um, I, it's, not, it's not necessarily true for everybody, you know. Um, and so it is, it is always that, that um, the space of, of asking the question and even being really articulate about what you're offering in that. Because if you were to invite someone over and just like they walk into just chaos and it's like, oh, I thought we were having dinner. You know, like if it, if you haven't framed up, I'm doing this as a gift to you. <laughs> um, it may not be received as a gift, you know, if it's not, if it's not clear that that's what the intent is. Excellent. Excellent answer. Thank you. Go you. So, Kim. Um, Jane. Because we have in our church, a, you know, I mean, and I'm sure that they're in every church, but we've got a good little group of young adults. Some of them are dating. We've got a few little people that are just um, sort of, you know, in the throes of early marriage, you know, first year, second year. And we've got a few older single people. Do In your experience, is it more useful to get people together to do life, you know, whether that's a Bible study or I don't know what, um, in, in, you know, just going, okay, you're all 24 to 32, so we're all yeah. going to get together, or is it actually better to go, you guys are young and dating or young and single, you guys should get together. You guys are just newly married, you should get together. Yeah. And, or is it like, what have you found works best? Yeah, unfortunately, the answer to that is like, it's a little bit of everything, you know, <laughs> which is the, the, the answer that you weren't hoping for. Um, I think, I reckon it's more about purpose. Like, what's the purpose of getting people together? Because I think then yeah. that shapes, shapes how you get them together. So if you're getting people together to explore the Bible and, you know, whatever, who cares how old you are, um, you know, what, your marital status, you know, that kind of stuff. But if you're getting people to, to journey life a little bit more together, maybe it does work to have, to be more similar life stage. But then, um, I mean, this is a challenge that my friends and I found coming through our church is you get, if you come past young adulthood, but you're not married, then you're like, there's no um, sort of affinity between me as a young, as a single 
30 year old with a single 18 year old like everything about our life is different you know other than the fact we're single and human like that's the only thing we kind of have in common in that sense in terms of life stage they're living at home I'm on my you know they're trying to decide what to do with their life I'm well into my career you know whatever it is um yeah but I, I think the framing of the purpose of the gathering is more important than the context of who it is because I think young, young married doing life together um, is helpful. Like it's always helpful to be with like. It's always, we, and we're naturally drawn to that. People like, oh, you're a young mum, I'm a young mum. Can we just hang out and just like share stories and so I know that I'm not in this on my own. But then likewise, it's good to hang around with a, a granny or an older mother because you want to get some of their experience. And so if you were to only hang around with other people who only have the same level of ignorance or wisdom as you that's not necessarily going to be helpful long term either you know there's this diversity of, yeah. of of um grabbing from places for different things and different reasons that i think um when we're when we're in that church context and we're trying to program things is being careful yeah. that we're not um yeah that we're not unnecessarily dividing or to, uh, you know even um i remember uh like a group of younger couples were together and that there was a couple of single people in their group and then they decided they wanted to do like a married, you know, or a couple's kind of um, devotional or whatever. And it's like, well, at that stage, that's a question about, you know, in tech, like it's probably not as useful for a single person to go through a marriage course, you know, in that context. But, but then to, is this the place for that or do we have a program over here where you can nominate to be a married person and join in that? Because is our life group that was about sharing life and doing life a place that we want to exclude people from because of their marital status? You know, so yeah. it's, I think yeah. it's, yeah. A, and so, it, re, it requires a level of fluidity and, um, and I guess in some ways ambiguity, you know, that, that it's, it's, it feels very messy to manage. But I think messy is the only way you actually don't miss people. Like, yeah. I think yeah. otherwise you have to have a group for people between the age of 30 and 30 and a half who are partially employed and sometimes, you know, and have lived in another country, but currently, you know, like you just get narrower and narrower yeah. and narrower and, yeah. and everybody's in their own group. Yeah. <laughs> so so <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, it's always that sort of, and, yeah. and I think I've said it before, but the um, not wasting credit um, where they don't need to be wasted, you know, that we, like we're, we're not separate, like, um, cause if we are doing a, a relationship and family series, it's possible that that's actually okay for me to attend because I have relationships and I have family. But, um, but sometimes we unnecessarily separate that out because if it's not a marriage course, if it's about relationships, then I'm in, you know, but we, we waste credits yeah. and we sort of say, oh, we're doing a relationship series. So for the married people, and then we say, oh, if you're single, you can come too, like, and tack it on the end but, if, but yeah. if, it's, if it's not actually about marriage then it doesn't need to be an exclusive thing so making yeah. sure that we're not not using credit because then sometimes it is this is like about marriage you have to bring your husband so if you don't have one you can't come like, and like yes. it's okay it's okay to say that in those moments but those moments really sting if it feels yeah. like that we're always experiencing those moments like I'm always yeah. being excluded because I don't have a husband just but saving that credit for a time when it actually is required, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's yeah. good. Yeah, good. Cool. Yeah. Okay, anyone else would like to ask anything? <laughs> Liz, uh, uh, hand is raised. Liz, unmute. There you go. <laughs> unmute. You're right. You're unmuted now. I can hear you. Oh, no, good. Oh, lost me. No, no. Oh, I've got you. We can, we can, we can hear you. Okay. okay, I can't see anyone. I've totally lost you guys. Anyway, look, um, yeah, I, in my own experience, um, about 20 years ago, uh, so I, I've been married 30 years, about 20 years ago, there was a whole group of uh, single girls about my age, you know, back then at 30, um, and they used to meet together and I just said to them, oh, do you, you know, do you mind if I join you? Um, we used to get together, I don't know, once a week or once a fortnight, something like that, eat a meal, watch a movie. We sort of, you know, shared our lives. And, um, and now, like 20 years later, one or two of them have married, but quite a few of them have still stayed single. And so the dynamics of that 
group has changed also mm. as as they have um, aged. And I think for me, I loved the group because I realised I didn't want to be single. But the single girls also realised, you know, after spending time with me that, well, maybe marriage is not, you know, um, <laughs> maybe it is a good thing, maybe it isn't. But, um, Just keeping it real, keeping it real. Keeping it real. Um, the thing that our church brought in last year, I got together with the young, uh, the young uh, parents' uh, pastor and we chatted. We were both sort of thinking of the same thing of... Um, having a prayer uh, partnership with the older people in our right. church for the young families. Now, that they were just who we decided, you know, we, we would like to, to pray for. It was great. Mm. 20 old people and 20 families. You, you just couldn't have picked it. Um, it was just great. It's coming up for a review very soon. Yeah. And I'd like to see something like that with our young people as well because I think that that group, and the older, older group, there, there, there is such that gap. Now, 40 years ago when I was going to church, when I was a teenager or whatever, our church did everything together. Sure, mm. we had our youth group and our Sunday school, but as a whole, we had picnics together, we had fellowship lunches together, we did all this together. Now, I see, you know, we've got something for the little kids, we've got something for the medium kids, we've got the boys and girls Brigade, we've got the young people, we've got the young youth, we've got the young adults, we've got, you know, every sort of age group catered for. Uh, guess which age group isn't, hasn't been totally catered for while we've been in lockdown? It's, it's yeah. the old group. Mm. Because there's stuff for families, stuff for kids, mm. stuff for the boys and girls. And everything like this, I'm thinking, wow, okay, uh, what is that? And I, I was just sort of thinking, uh, you know, I think because the world has changed somewhat, I still get that feeling sometimes that once you get to 50 or 55, it's like you're getting, you, you're getting pushed out. You're getting sort of left behind. And, you know, I just love the young families. I love the young girls I'm mentoring. Well, not mentoring, but in a friendship with a young girl who's only 23 or 24. I love that. Um, I'd like to see, you know, more of that uh, happen. And um, I just, yeah, I just sort of put that out there that um, that that gap is still there. And yeah. every church is different. And I know the dynamics of every church is different. But I still get, you know, that sense that the catering is for the next generation and they're our next leaders and they're this and they're that. But then the over 50s, uh, just, you know, left to, you know, head towards death you know, <laughs> on their own, you know, without these ones, you know, coming up and caring for us and, you know, um, and, and having that relationship with us and respecting and honouring. And look, I confess, you know, that the opposite is true when I think, you know, you know a young person, well, really, they haven't experienced life as we have, but we had Sally Contessi on Sunday speaking at our Mother's Day church service and I was just like, the Lord just really spoke to me. He said, he's a young person. He's, you know, somebody that's going through stuff and I can, we can relate to that even though we're 30 years, you know, difference. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I, I think what you're describing there, Elizabeth, is, I mean, commentators call it the generation gap. Like it is, it, it, it is the reality of disconnect that happens between generations and one of the things and Sally would be the champion of this conversation in Queensland as well but one of the things the conversations I keep having in our churches is I think every every generation thinks the other generation doesn't isn't interested in them or doesn't want them and and that they they can't relate to them you know like young people will freeze up at the idea of talking to older people and older people are like oh, young people don't want to talk to me and you know and you're like you both actually want to talk to each other but where there's a gap, you know, there's a gap in communication or an ex in expression. And I think it's a really good thing to be mindful of. And even as you, you know, as you say, you sit there and listen to Sally and you think, you're thinking, how can I connect with her? I reckon that's the nurtured conversation that we want to be having in our churches. You know, that leadership would be um, championing that idea of actually pointing people towards each other. You know, yes. in, those, in that, that um, we, we all have so much to give to each other 
but also we have so much to draw from from others as well regard you know across all um generations life stages you know it's it's true and um the churches that are, are are doing well that you could really describe as generational which is that they're not just that all the generations are represented but they all feel engaged and that there's some interactivity across them are ones who do intentionally nurture those events and places where everybody's together you know that there's a um where the more the picnic you know commu um hospitality type situations or events where it's encouraged or even where there's an encouragement of engagement of cross generations within the sunday service you know that you see all generations kind of represented in how church is conducted mm. yeah Thanks. thank you I have to unmute myself, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I nearly Anyone thought else? what your brain was saying, but like it's better if you say it with your voice. Yeah. Anyone else got anything they want to ask Kimberly or say to her or anything? James laughing. I can see that. What is going on at her house? Oh. <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself. I'm just so funny. You I'm are. Going on at my house. That's fine. Yeah. Is someone at <laughs> um, the back yeah. of your room doing yeah. yoga, Jane? Is that what it is? <laughs> yes. Is, is, is Brett dancing? <laughs> no, Josh is just talking about how much he loves his banana. Oh, that's that classic. classic song. Mm. It's so cute. Yeah. Shannon? I was just wondering if you could speak to um, effective ladies in ministry. Um, I see that you do that and do that well. I think that that's um, such an awesome example for us to have. Um, but I also know that there are some churches, not just Baptist churches, and um, that don't necessarily value that. Um, and so, I, yeah, I would just, I, I don't really have a question. Can I just throw that at you as a comment? <laughs> um, talk about the things, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> just some thoughts around that and yeah. even um, so for people, how to move into that and, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a challenging um, space, particularly for um, churches who don't have females in leadership to start to have females in leadership because you don't have females in leadership, yeah. so it's hard to have females in leadership. Like it's sort of this cycle of of that needs to be broken somehow. And I mean, I, one of the classic things that I um, I think it was an A N Z ad or something like, or for an insurance company or somebody did this great thing. I'll find it. Um, again, but where they, they asked young women, you know, like young girls, what do they want to be when they grew up? And it was like author, um, marine biologist and a, um, a helicopter doctor was one of them. But then they all said that, um, but of course they won't be because when they said, what are the, who are the ones that you admire? They named men and they didn't have any women that they could name. And so they genuinely didn't think they would be that when they grew up because they couldn't sort of see, they hadn't seen a female. So they, in this um, clip, they introduced them to females that do that job. And, um, and the, you know, the girls were like, I didn't even know girls did this, you know, and they were so excited. But the catchphrase was, you can't be what you can't see. And, um, and so some of it, I think, is, is trying to work out how we increase the, the profile, if you like, the visibility of our females. And this is a challenge because it, it, it kind of needs a pendulum swing a little bit more towards, you know, to be imbalanced towards female for that balance to correct itself. Like that's how the balance has to happen. So you you have to give a woman an opportunity to be present in a place that they may not otherwise even be completely ready for because someone just has to go there first. Like I think we, and that's the, the catch cry we hear is, well, there's no, you know, I'm happy to appoint a woman, but there's none around, you know, well, there's not going to be any around if we don't appoint them, you know, like, mm. and it's, so it's this cycle. And I think um, the risk, we have to be a bit more prepared to take the risk on, um, on breaking that, you know, and giving the, the first opportunity. There's a guy, um, James Lawrence out of um, England, he's done some work around leadership and he was talking about um, the, that when you're trying to introduce, it's the, um, what do they call it? The, the only, the first only other first, First, only different, maybe, um, which is this sort of like when a woman's the first person to be at the, the boardroom table or, you know, but be, when they come there, they carry the weight of being the first and the only, 
and the different. And so um, he was saying that um, they did studies around millennial engagement in leadership, like how do we get younger people to the leadership table? And he said that you you do them in twos, like you use the Noah's Ark theory and you bring them in t in pairs. But um, but he was saying that that's because then they're not carrying that mantle of being the only um, or the, the one different person. And so in a group, they're much more likely to contribute, well, this is all research based, much more likely to contribute their ideas, much more likely to be taken seriously because they're not there to fill a nominal position um, and where they're the token young person or the token ethnic person or the token gender, you know, in a space that if you bring them on in pairs. So that was an interesting one. And I, don't, I haven't actually seen any churches engage that, that in any sphere yet, but I reckon it's a good it's a good thing to consider because when we do bring someone, I mean, I feel this in most places I preach, that I'm not just preach, I'm not just here to be a faithful steward of the word of the Lord. I'm here to represent the female gender and, and to make a case for females who preach everywhere I go. Like I, I know, I'm, like I don't do that in my head, but I, I have to push that that aside. I'm carrying that on my shoulders it, nearly everywhere I go, where they're like, can you come and preach at our church? We've never had a female preach here before, or we don't have any female preachers, or you know, this event has never had a female on the stage, or you know, whatever it is. And so you're like, well, yeah, I think I can do, like my calling and my gifting and my capacity equips me for that, but I've got this massive weight I'm carrying where you're not just listening to me for what God would say through me, but you're actually listening to decide whether you think I should be there or not. You know, like, uh, and I'm deciding for the rest of female immunity that comes after me, um, whether or not they get the opportunity. Like, this is the, this is how it's kind of, um, ended up being in a number of places, both in the corporate sector, but also, you know, in church life. So, um, but that being said, I've come to the place I am more than happy to respond to a token female invitation. Like, so, oh, you need a female on your brochure, do you? Yep, here's my photo. Like, <laughs> I'm happy to be that person because I just, the thing that keeps resonating for me, and I preached one time at a church and, um, and actually the church that I was, preaching at they had female pastors and females who preached before but I was um a unique version of that for them like the the other women were far more um quiet um demure they were older um and and this one young lady came up to me in tears and she said I thought God has told me that he has leadership and preaching you know for me but then I've watched these other women and I know I'm not like them and so I think I, I thought I must have got it wrong and she said, but I've, now that I've oh, seen God. you, yeah, it was amazing. So now that I've seen you and I've seen that you can do it like you, you know, which, which is basically, she was sort of, I think, just loud and silly and, you know, all those things. But, um, but, she, but she was just in tears because she said it just broke something for her that she was almost sort of pushing aside this idea that, like, I must have got it wrong because that is not, like, I can't do that. I can't be that, you know. And, but she just only seen one kind of female leader you know and so um so yeah i love the idea that as i step into camps and rooms and churches and whatever that there's people younger women particularly but even older but who are sitting there going yes i could i could do this you know and so um i think exposing our churches generally but particularly our younger women so that they can be what they do see you know that there's a sense of um of them not having only male models of how to do certain things that there's you know within church life um that we're if it's not in our church that we're at least pointing them to people that are doing it in other places you know that they have exposure to that so that it builds their confidence that this is something so that if they do feel god placed it on their heart then yes maybe i'm right you know because <laughs> i've seen other women um move in that into that space now too yeah thank you that's brilliant yeah it's it's a challenging i mean i it's still you know the um, it's, it's a disappointment for me that this is still such a big deal in the church, given, um, you know, just how Jesus, he, like, not, don't talk about what the Bible said, but because that has its own case to make, but Jesus was so affirming of females, you know, any, there was nothing about gender that excluded us from his presence. He told Mary first, like, he didn't say, Mary, go get a man and tell her to tell, tell him to tell the other people. Like, you know, he, he trusted women. I feel like there's a, 
there's um, a mistrust that is, is being sort of nurtured when we don't allow women into spaces. And, um, and then we set it up to say they have to prove themselves into a space that, that men just don't have to do. Like, you know, and, it's, and so we're putting a weight. Of, and so it, what it does is it raises the bar so high that I totally understand why females wouldn't want to attempt to jump it you know, that it's just too hard, you know. It's, um, and in fact, I've had a number of conversations with churches who've had this conversation, you know, and sort of navigating what do we think and because that we haven't had women preach, do we want women to preach, we haven't had women elders, do we want women elders? And I always say, if you're going to give the pulpit to a female for the first time, please bring me or someone else in. I will be your scapegoat because do not slaughter one of your dear ones <laughs> <laughs> on the, you sacrifice them on the altar of first timeness, like because you know it's going to be a hard gig for whoever stands up there first. You know, I'll come, I'll preach and run, I'll just you know <laughs> leave it with you, and I'll be, they can you know dislike me and they can crit critique me, and I can be the you know whatever because it's I'm not personally invested in that community, you know. But please don't put some fresh, young, enthusiastic, passionate girl up there for the first time. It doesn't matter what she says, the critique will be about whether she was allowed to say it, not about whether she said it well, you know, and that's, that's too much to put on a girl, young woman's shoulders, I think. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's so good because I was actually going to ask you some stuff along those lines. So that was a great question, Shannon. And, yeah, um, I think with three daughters, it's something that just resonates with me. Like you say, they, they can't be what they can't see. Yeah. Um, and that's really important. Then. And I really appreciate the way that you champion that and do it so well with such grace and gentleness as well, because I think that's really important that, um, that it's a gentle thing that happens. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think so too. And, and we have, um, thanks for that. I, th I think we, we've done ourselves a disservice, you know, from time to time where we've not handled the conversation well, you know, and we've added some, um, some heat to the fire that doesn't need to be there because it's hot enough. On its own, but I do think um, you know there's a, there is a shift that's taking place. But um, but I just wish I just break my heart that the church is so far behind the the this general understanding that humanity has of equality and um, and you know non gender based or you know gift based um, ministry or, or, or engagement. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Wow. All right. Does anyone else want to say anything before we? Pray for Kimberly and close off. No one's unmuting. No one, no one. No? Cool. Thank you today. That, today's been awesome. All right. The name of the book um, was What We Cannot oh, yes. Be Alone, Understanding Singleness. Oh, Kim, Kimberlysmith.org is, um, is where to go to find that. Yeah. And we've got that information too, Liz. If you needed to know anything else, just give us a yell. That's awesome. Awesome. So thank you for coming today. Um, we're going to pray for you because you do have a big job um, and lots going on while you know, we're in isolation. Well, not and much, but yeah. <laughs> all that stuff to do. Well, you know what I mean. All the time except not now. So yeah. you reckon it's a different kind of lot today? It is. Yep, it is. Like, I've, this, no, this week it's all I've done. I think I've got like five recordings happening this week. It's just like, hmm. I've been on this for the last three days. So. <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? My problem is I keep forgetting. I, I have a problem with repetition just as a, you know, personality issue. But um, so this is not helping me because I have this conversation with a whole lot of different groups, but it's like I'm having the, it's with the same computer. And so then I can't remember, like, have I told, like, I know yeah. I've told the computer this today. But were you on the other side of it or was somebody else on the other side of this? It's not helping me. I need to, like, write notes. So I did say this to Kathy. Did not say this to Kathy. It was someone else on the computer, Kim. Yeah, oh, I totally, totally. Yesterday I was like, I don't know if I've told you this already. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, actually, no, you haven't. Like, oh, good. No, like, you haven't. No, that was the that same computer, else. different person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Would someone like to pray for Kimberly? Oh, will I? I just thought I'd put that out there. I was going to actually ask my head up and I didn't. And if I ask Shannon again, she'll probably throw something at me. I can't throw something at you because can't pass through the computer. And I can you still try that? Because you just looks throw <laughs> like that. That would still yeah. kind of work. So. No, I'd love to. Oh, Thank awesome. you. Thank you.
Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just um, want to thank you for this opportunity and, and thank you that at this time when things are uncertain, that we can actually have unique opportunities to connect with each other mm. um, in a special way that we may not have done otherwise. I just really want to thank you for Kimberly and for her ministry. I just really want to thank you that she does have the giftings to be able to articulate things that other people often feel but can't necessarily name quite so well. I just want to thank you that you've given her that voice and you've given her that platform um, to really speak into these issues, Lord. I just really pray over the lives that she has impact on. And I just really pray that you will continue to gift her and to give her the words and the time and um, the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to speak into life after life after life um, through generations, through singleness and, and through being a woman in leadership, Lord. I just really want to thank you that you've placed her in that position, that your anointing is definitely upon her and that she is just so um, generous, gracious and gentle in that position, Lord. Would you just bless her throughout this time and um, just give her a, a, a real sense of your spirit upon her as she does experience some aloneness. And I just really pray that you'd also build that excitement within her when she gets to finally be around people again. Thank you for her ministry, Lord, and we just pray your blessing upon her in your name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Amen. Shannon. Thanks, You're Shannon. Done. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming today and thank you so much, Kimberly. Like seriously, I always love chatting to you. Um, next week we're talking to two ladies from math, not maths, um, <laughs> Mission Aviation <laughs> Fellowship, not married at first sight. Um, that Shannon, as one of them in PNG and one is, I can't remember. They both work in PNG, but currently both of them are in Australia. So one of them is actually from math Germany. And um, one of them is from Map Australia. They are both work in PNG, um, but in si different situations. One of them is out in a remote village with her husband and three kids. And then the other lady is actually the communications officer um, in Hagen. And her husband's obviously a pilot as well, because that's what they do. Um, but I've known both of them probably for, uh, yeah, a, a, a long time. They were, they were both in PNG. When I was there, so um, I'm really excited, and they're really excited too. So it's going to be great. Excellent. And so Shannon's going to be interviewing them, and I'll I'll be there. I'm going to help too. But I thought give her a go. It'll be really cool. So, all right, everyone. Give her a so go. Give her a go. Today. She deserves yeah. a chance. Give, give her a go. Her. <laughs> I am giving her a go. <laughs> see you right. guys. We'll okay. you see. see you all. Yeah, yes. we'll see you all next Thursday, two o'clock. Bye. 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 Thank you.